Folks, you're looking at the Del Marino Flipper Flail Mower right here. We've got this set up with a hydraulic side shift, all right? This is one of the few models I haven't shown you yet from Del Marino, and we're gonna be pushing the limits, all right? I've got a Kubota B2650 cab tractor. I just picked this up recently. I love air conditioning, what can I say? I like being, I like not sneezing too, okay? And I, I like the heat, so I got this to, to, well, do some mowing with. And I normally, if you're gonna ask me, say I had a, a B2650, I'd recommend the, the 62 inch or the five foot version of this, not the six foot version, but we're gonna push the limits in a video here and show you if it uh, can get the job done or not. And if not, I'll just use this on a bigger tractor and get a smaller one for the Kubota. So while this model still side shifts, it's a little bit different with like the, there's no swing arms on there, like on the Funny Top and on the, uh, the Centurion and the Flipper Super. This one just kind of has this stationary frame and then a rod with a cylinder where it just smoothly slides back and forth. And this is one of the most popular models that Del Marino sells in general, not that Good Works Tractor sells, but in general, uh, Del Marino does. So the, the funny top is gonna be a lot cheaper than this one, all right? Um, but it only goes up to 35 horsepower at the PTO, whereas this one goes up to 70 horsepower. So 15 to 70 horsepower, you're gonna have Oh, I think it's a 32, uh, 42, a 50, 62, 72, 85 inch, all right? So not quite uh, nominally on the foot, but roughly, a, oh, what is that? Something like a three and a half foot, a four foot, five foot, six foot, and seven foot, right around there. These are all gonna be in centimeters and then, you know, converted to inches. And so it doesn't line up with our imperial system right on the dot. Now these come from Italy, all right? They're kind of a, a flail mower hotbed for, for one reason or another. And I kind of I kind of think, at least in my, the story I've made up in my own head is there was probably this family of folks that made flail mowers and they probably all got in a big fight and went their own separate ways and then made a bunch of different flail mower companies to compete against each other. That's what I'm sticking with anyways. But the cool thing about this flail mower, and I haven't done it yet, is you can actually mount this on the front of a tractor as well with some stipulations, okay? You can you can move some of the frame and the bracketry over to the front. You gotta have a front three-point hitch on your tractor. You have to have a front PTO to be able to connect it and power it and all that. So there's still some other requirements that are gonna limit most of us from being able to use it on the front, but that's kind of a unique thing about the flipper. Similar to the other flail mowers that are out there, this is gonna be a belt drive system. You have three belts over here. There's no slip clutch. There's no shear bolts. The belts are your driveline protection. There's gonna be a belt tensioner. That's how you make sure that they're not gonna burn up or slip too much. You just have to set that correctly in order to do so. You still have a built-in parking stand up here. You're gonna have two ways to control your cut of height adjustment. The first one was with the top link. Seems kind of weird, but if you extend the top link out, it's gonna kind of cock the whole thing back this way and it raises that height of cut. If you shorten it, it kind of lowers the whole thing back down on the ground and shortens the height of cut. The other way is with the roller, and we actually have to adjust this before we start mowing. It's, in my opinion anyways, um, we're in the low setting right now, and if these two bolts are holding this roller in place. So I'm gonna leave this bolt here, and I'm gonna move this top bolt over here. So I'm gonna kind of rotate it this way, and that's gonna put the roller down further and then raise our base cut height a little bit higher. Since I'm gonna use this for trails uh, and some lawn areas, I want it to not be super, super short. And so I'm gonna raise this up and probably get it to around, oh, about the three inch mark is kind of what I'm aiming for. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Couple other notable features, you are gonna have skid runners on either end as well and they will have adjustment points to raise and lower those. You're gonna have zerks where you need them for greasing. You can kind of see this top rail here. Uh, it's got a zerk on the backside, you can grease that up too. But beyond that, you do again have the option to have a manual or a hydraulic side shift, all right? So manual means you don't have to have any remotes on your tractor to plug it into and operate it. If you are gonna have the hydraulic side shift, then you need to have a hydraulic remote available on your tractor to hook it up to. We have no front end loader on this tractor. And so what we did is we utilized where the loader 
plugs are at right now, we ran some hoses, okay? It comes with hoses, but they weren't long enough to go all the way up to the, to the mid location. So we got some hose extensions, had those made up and plugged in there, and we used the loader joystick to shift this thing in and out. Now, one of the big decisions you need to make when you buy a flail mower is, do you get Y blades or do you get hammer blades? And so I've done a video about those differences. We showed different mowing conditions and everything else. Uh, recently, this summer, we actually did a video mowing a section of my lawn with hammer blades. Traditionally, you'll hear folks say that Y blades are meant for grasses and light weeds, kind of like what we're standing in now. Hammer blades, kind of as the name suggests, are for thicker, nastier material brush, uh, small saplings, that kind of thing. But I've found the hammer blades work really well on grass. And if I were gonna pick one, I would probably lean towards the hammer blades. They're gonna be more durable, more robust. They still did a really nice job on my lawn. And then I know I can go and tackle the field, the brush line, whatever else it is at the same time. You can always swap the blades out if you want to. It's gonna take you a couple hours of work to do. All those individual blades are bolted on separately, so you gotta unbolt them all, put the different blade on, and you're good to go. But that option is still available. Same thing, if you break one off, you don't have to replace a whole bunch of them. You just have to replace one individual blade. So that's the nice thing about it. So the versatility of the type of material, or the materials that you can cut with a flail mower is one of the reasons why they're so popular but also their compact nature, all right? So whether you're storing this in a shed or a barn or your garage, it takes up less storage space compared to a brush hog. That would, it would probably hang out, oh, maybe, maybe three times the length by the time you have that tail wheel out here. Same thing for maneuverability. If you're in tight spaces, if you're in the woods, just cramped quarters, well, you're a lot shorter overall, so you can turn a lot easier. If you're trailering equipment, right? Maybe you're going to your, your farm up north or wherever the heck it is, well, again, that's three, four feet compared to a brush hog. You can save a lot of space to fit an extra attachment or maybe just get by with a shorter trailer in general. So a lot of other, maybe you don't realize the benefits until you actually get into that situation. They are pricier than a brush hog. There's no doubt about that, but you're buying something like this to last you for years and years and years. I mean, maybe five years, 10 years, could be 20 years or 30 years. And so the extra cost spread over a long period of time like that really isn't that significant. That'll wrap it up for us today, folks. If you have any questions on what's the right flail mower for me, just send us a note, send us an email or go to the contact form on whatever listing it is you're looking at. Just say, I don't know, right? Just put your tractor making your model in there. That'll help us figure out what you need. If you can let us know if you have hydraulics on your tractor to operate it, or if you don't, or if you're gonna get some, or whatever that situation is, that'll help determine what direction we go in as well. But whether you're looking for a flail mower, or anything else for the three-point, or if you have a front-end loader and you want something for your front-end loader, like forks, a grapple, a snow pusher, you name it, you can get it from goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.